and or an alternate. So I am uh, alternate on midnight. I'm in e regs and I, I did voice that to the shop steward that I wanted to sit into a grievance hearing. So last night I sat I sat in on a uh, grievance hearing with the shop store and I let the supervisor know that I you know I would be doing so and I did it you know and I was gone for like over an hour you know and we did have call outs like we do and I told my supervisor and the shop store told the supervisor and nothing was the when I came back, my co-worker, which is a very great friend of mine, went off on me, started screaming at me. And I just was very puzzled on why he was doing that. Well, he was left alone the whole time I was handling, you know, shop steward duties and learning in, you know, the shop steward, you know, position. He started screaming at me, started yelling at me. It's just like, oh my, I was like, wow, what did I do wrong? And he was blaming me for leaving him alone. And he was working hard because I was, you know, running around doing shop steward stuff. And, you know, it's just, I'm sitting there like looking at him and he, it, I know it's the heat has a high part of it, but also it's the fact that management just don't care about us as, you know, employees. I mean, if somebody steps off, they should be able to replenish somebody. Right. And that clearly didn't happen. So because it didn't happen, they basically uh, left, my, left basically my co-worker stranded. Yeah, I hear it. All right, cool. Yeah, so the, they left the co-worker <laughs> stranded stranded there so now i come back from handling shop speaker stuff right you know i had to go up to you know uh security and i come back my my co-workers just lit into me like he's screaming on top of his lungs at me and it was embarrassing for me but i had to like handle it professionally right. and i was telling him i was like listen i didn't do this to you right now it wasn't me i was like i did what i was supposed to do i let supervisor know that you know i was going to handle some business you know, for being an uh, alternate shop store. I was like, so that was my, you know, letting her know he needs help. Right. We had a call out. We, you should pass off some person personnel over there. Mm. It's your job to make that move. Right. Well, I was gone for like over an hour, and it could have been longer, because you know how hearings yeah. and all, you're, oh, yeah. you're waiting for management, they're dragging their feet, and you have to stay there with the member. Right. So, you know, I'm just learning the ways. Well, the shop store, Clarence Smart, had to, go somewhere else they called somebody else and I stood with that person because he said I have to have an emergency thing to handle right because I'll be back so now my my co-worker sees that person now he thinks I'm just lollygagging and walking around dragging my feet and I'm not I'm like literally waiting right. in security and like it's somebody's job on the line that you know I'm representing right. and it, he don't understand that but th this is why I'm bringing this up what he said really hit home he said, I don't care about the union. I don't care about nothing. He was I hate these. He's, like, he's like, you're over here dragging your feet. He's like, you're doing this to get out of work. And, you know, that's all you're doing this for. And that hurt me because that's not why I do this. I don't do this to, to get out of work. If I wanted to do this to get out of work, I would have did this years ago. <laughs> right. I mean, why am I waiting now, 19 right. years so. to do it now? It's because I'm older and I can't handle the work. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm going give to you, give you some advice. Um, people are gonna talk. Yeah. They, they, they just, no matter what you do. Yeah. Good or bad. Um, people are just going to talk. Some people are gonna like you. Yeah. Some people don't. Uh, we, me and you right now can come up with a cure for cancer. Mm -hmm. Right now. Yeah. I, and people will hate that. But it's the, just, it's just, just human nature. The, the funny part is, is that his mentality is a lot of people's mentality. What's up, mentality. Jackie? And the, the, the mentality that. He it's their responsibility to handle it and replenish it or punish to help. Right. And instead of like seeing it that way, I got the whole, you know, <laughs> brunt of the blame. Right. And I'm sitting there like, why are you blaming me? And he's blaming me for because he worked hard. So you know, well look, if you're working hard, now this is my my thought process. Right. You're working hard, right? Mm -hmm. You're not working hard because UPS made you work hard, right? 
You're yeah. working hard because you want it to. Your right. initiative is right. that's where you, you know your body. You're in control. Right. You work hard because you wanted to work hard. Right. I can't. UPS can't sit on top of you and go. You're working this pace and that pace. Right. You're doing that. Right. If you're the only person there and you're killing yourself, be you know above your you know range or you know above your body limit and you know it's hot and everything yeah. why are you blaming me right i told him i was like it's not my fault i was like you are in control here right i was like if you see everybody like you know there's five people on the other side and you're only one person and i'm over away and it's, we have a call out you, you know either you ride the wave so to speak mean mm -hmm. that's what a lot of us do i mean yeah. how many times you know you start up on preload and you're the only person there. I know, man. It's just like I said. Don't don't let it get to your own. No, it's it, it's it's because you you are a very passionate person. So when stuff yeah. like this happens, yeah, it's going to get to you. Trust me, I've been there. But my thing is, man, just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. It's it's it's, it's going to get better. And man, and, and, and until us as a group, yeah, change the mentality of our members. Yeah, it's always going to be like that. Yeah, and they don't understand that. Hey, man, this is a union. Yeah. You got, if somebody's job is on the line, your job yeah. is to make sure that member is protected and that he still has a job. Yeah. He doesn't understand, that person doesn't understand the boxes, all he cares about yeah. is the boxes. Yeah. You worry about that member being able to come back to those boxes. And, and it's funny because, like, I, I was talking about this to, I don't know if I was talking with you or somebody else, but it's like the union is kind of like an afterthought to a lot of, of members. And the, the way I say that is, you have a lot of members that are, I don't want to say bad, but you have you, good and bad, that's what you understand. Right. So you have members that are really good, meaning good as in they come to work every day, right. they're on time, they don't rock no boats, they're not on any radar. Right. Then you got employees that quote unquote bad, you know, that they don't come to work, they're coming in the league, you know, they rock the boat, they don't listen, and so on and so forth. So who in them too, or most likely to use a union? Right, the people that right. The best, right. So the good ones have a, a mentality like, I don't need the union. I don't create any waves. I don't do this. I don't do that. So why do I care? And I'm like, hey, there's a day you never know what's going to happen. Exactly. It, it, and, there's always going to be a day coming. We talked yeah. about this. At, before we go any further, I want to have a moment of silence for our sister, uh, Romaine Atkins. She lost her mother uh, not that long ago. <clears throat> So um, I really want to just, you know, tell her that, hey, sister, we, you are in our prayers and our thoughts. Uh, our, our heart goes out to you and your family. Um, you know, we, us as a union, man, this, especially over the last couple of years, man, we've been getting hit hard with the loss of our loved ones. And you, you never know when it's going to be your time. So we just want to let you guys know, hey, listen, man, we, we got to come together. Outside of this union and, 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 and the company stuff, there's a lot of life being lost mm -hmm. in our in our family, so we really need to focus on that. The union is going to be here. The company's not going to change. But the one thing that we really got to start focusing on is making sure we come together in a time of need because the company doesn't care. You know that. And uh, ironically and unfortunately, our union officials, you know, they they got a lot of stuff going on, so they may not can't reach out to to you the way you may want them to. That's why we created that page so when stuff happens, we can come together, focus on where we heard at, let's lift our brothers and sisters up, especially in this in these times, man. Times are, are rough. What's going on, Manny? It's bad right now, but uh, yeah, I, I uh, just wanted to touch on that. And because, sister, you you in our prayers and our thoughts, we have a moment of silence for you. Right, all right. So, again, when we go, we got ten weeks, man. Ten weeks. Ten weeks. I came out of the uh, the hub today, this morning. I was coming to the show. Mm -hmm. Feel guy was coming up. He said, "Yo, ten weeks," and that made me feel good, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People are they they they, they are excited, they intrigued, they engaged about what we've been doing over this last few years. And yeah. with him saying that. Especially from coming from the feeder classification. Yeah, feeder you know drivers I mean? are, are like, they make up a lot of the boat. 
They do. Yeah, they, they really do. do. They and, loop, and you know they are the top echelon job, and yeah. a lot of those guys been here. And they're very passionate yeah. members. They really right. are because they know they they're probably the most in loop members yeah. of the company. Package car drivers and, and feeder drivers yep. are you know the bulk of the people who vote. Yep. And you know by him saying that this morning, man, it made me feel good because I know we're. We, 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 it took a long time, but I think people are starting to understand, hey, man, listen, this is not the way the union is supposed to be ran. We're supposed to be a force. We're supposed to have a fight. Yeah. We're supposed to have a voice. We're supposed to have respect, too. We're supposed to. Yeah. But, you know, those things are not happening. Well, well I wanted to retrace my art, my steps because um, I started off the show talking about the reasons. Okay. And I don't know if you looked into it, but I, yeah. I did look into it, and the answer I got is that year seniority thing like when you hit a year rather your anniversary date and you don't get your raise then right now it's august, august 1st, 1st right. for new hires right so this year they're going to get one dollar and the veterans are going to get 75 cents right so that's that's august 1st 2019 right and the date that yeah, he vote in the <laughs> yeah you voted man come on hey you know he voted <laughs> so What's gonna ha What's gonna happen is the <laughs> the the, top, the dollar rate, is, the, the minimum rate for starting is gonna change from thirteen right. to fourteen. Fourteen, right? So anybody coming in all after August first is gonna be uh, fourteen dollars an hour. Right. So now anybody that started with the company after August first, two thousand eighteen, even if it was like October, they're gonna get the raise in August first. Right. Now, the 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 question that I was having. Because you got veterans have been here for five years, going on their sixth year. Mm -hmm. When they get their sixth year, they're going to get seventy-five cents. Right. Right now, they're making thirteen twenty. They're going to be making thirteen ninety-five. Or are they going to get the nickel? And I was told yes, but then again, see, this is the thing. I had I had filed a grievance uh, a few months ago because one of our members had didn't get the full raise. She got yeah, I remember that. As right. soon as it happened. So what happened was. She had got fifty cent earlier, yeah, for her for her yearly anniversary day. Yeah, I remember somebody was telling me this. So, so then what they did was they gave her the, the next fifty cent to get her up to thirteen dollars. So yeah. she wasn't going to get the seventy cents. So these other people may fall in that same category. Well, here's the thing: it, it, they bumped everybody up because they didn't want anybody making below starting thirteen dollars, right? So if the new starting rate is going to be fourteen dollars, and then you're going to have members in here making thirteen ninety five, they're going to have to bump. They're them up. going to have to bump them up just based on that information alone because you did it once. Why are you not going to well, do it again? Well, the thing too. Well, I, well, then, 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 then that if that's the case. Then, the, then our sister should get the twenty cent because according to Dennis Taylor, nobody was going to get less than seventy cents. Mm -hmm. Nobody was going to get that, but she did. So, I mean, it's, I mean, there's so much stuff in that contract, man. There's so many gray areas uh, and, uh, uh. and how you can wiggle around. Cause, cause take, now check this out. Oh boy. <laughs> now last <laughs> night, right, uh, we had a member. Now her, now, now listen to this. Um, listen now to she, she started in September. She, she started in September, right? Okay. Then she quit in March. Okay. So it's my assumption that she should get the, the retro pay, right? Okay. But what happened was she quit okay. or she resigned. Yeah. But she came back. Yeah, and is she a small sort? I don't know. Yeah, because my mom was telling me about something like this. Okay. Too. Okay. So, so she was like, "Am I going to get the retro?" Mm -hmm. I said, "You know, you have a very interesting situation." Absolutely. She came back and this. So, it just so happened that HR was in. I want everybody to listen. Everybody that's wondering if you're going to get the retro or not. Now, this and is coming from the full-time supervisor from the night sort from the HR person. Now, this is for people that quit. Quit. Okay. So, um, so I go in there and say, hey, uh, if I got the guy name, hey, listen, now, she started in September, she worked until March, but she came back. Now, is she going to get her retro? He said, no. And I said, why not? He said, well, and that's the part that messed me up. Mm. He said that it was agreed upon, union and the company, that if you didn't work up until April 29th, you would not get the retro so everybody that had a question about the mm. retro you gotta call the union and find out you know because according to him and i know the company lies so i didn't really you know 
you know, agree to what he was saying or believe it. But what you got to do is you got to call the union wow. hall, 215-289-0580, because according to the HR full-time rep, if you didn't work up until April 29th of 2019, you will not be getting a retro. Mm -mm -mm. And that's, he said it was agreed upon between the union and the company. So what Jeez. you're going to have to do is call the union hall and find out what's really going on. That's that's out of control because, you know, it's basically you working on money that you're owed anyway. He's like, exactly. you, put, you put the labor out there, so you're telling so me. So what, what they may have to do is get the Department of Labor involved. That's amazing. For, for you know, wage theft, because that's exactly what they did. There's nothing so easier. So if the union doesn't do it, guys, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to contact Department of Labor, Wage Division. And uh, if you need some help, trust me, I've, I've done it. Uh, we'll help you out because, according to, like I said, according to the full-time suit that represents the HR department, he's saying that if you didn't work up until April 29th, then you would not get the uh, the retro. That, that's amazing. So right? another thing, as on uh, no, Espo, Romeo, I want to talk about is this whole bylaw thing. A lot of people are kind of like confused and they don't know how it's going to work because they feel as though, hey, listen, look, we appreciate it, but how do we know um, the person in charge? Is it go pick their buddies? Yep, pick their friends. I've been told this multiple times. And and you know what, and Romeo? And that's that's the scary part the, because the reason why they're thinking like that is because of people in office. Yes, and then this is this is huge because it's like you're thinking a corrupt way, and, right. and I want to. It's a corrupt. So you're right. You're it's, right. It's a, you're you right. know a word that you know it's kind of harsh, but it's the way the thought process that you're having because it might have happened before. Right. And if and, and you seen it. So because this is in the back of your mind, that's the first thing that pops up. You know, and it's like the negativity that pops up in your head when you think about our union is you know, our local. Right. It's is kinda alarming because you you should be like, you know, when you hear Teamster or you hear you're in a union, you're like, Wow, that's amazing. You know, you guys right. are in union union jobs right. are cool, but then you like you come inside and people are like, Wow, like I haven't seen this one for a long time, I haven't right. seen that, I don't know, and this is what's going on. I mean, I talked to you about this, you know, segueing into the same thing. Right. Where um I'm gonna say a member uh, Richard, Richard Hooker took a picture of a member. <laughs> yeah. I, I and yeah. yeah, I'm not saying the names, he took yeah. a picture of a member and he put it online. Now, like I said, you have the quote-unquote good employees and the quote-unquote bad employees. And not saying that they're bad. It's just, the, you know, using that word. Um, this person might be getting in a little trouble. You know what I mean? Right. Or has gotten in trouble. Or the next thing of, uh, you know, you know, you got a, a verbal or written uh, right. suspension right. and so on and so forth. So you don't want to get in trouble. So the whole thing is, is that. He wants to support us, and he is supporting us. He took the picture to support right, us, right. but it was brought to his attention if he was to support us, like out in the open, that the, 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 the incumbents wouldn't fight. For yeah, him. that our e-board well, wouldn't fight for him as well as they would somebody that supports them. Now, there's members out there that do feel this way. They feel oh, that, yeah. that I, they yeah. feel it 100 percent that you know when somebody you know you get you got in trouble. Right, say say you got in trouble, the union had to get involved, say you were terminated, you know, suspended, they turned the suspension into a warning letter, you know, you were terminated, you had one day off instead of a month, right. whatever right. it may have you, you know, that's fine. People have got to understand is that you are paying for this service. This is a service you are paying for. You are pay, you are a union member, right. your dues come out of your paycheck every week and this is what you're paying for so let me let me remove our e-board let me just take whoever's in office and remove them let's put seven random people right. in there off that we don't even know they have the same responsibilities and they will uh, you know do the same thing you know now the relationships they have with management will be different yes but it's nothing that you can't build up Right. You know, and it's stuff that you have to do, uh, you know, anyway. Right. And, and, and the people are so scared that, well, if I support you guys, I, you know. Well, and, and, and even even if people are, are not getting in trouble, um, like you said. Yeah. Um, a lot, like even your situation, when yeah. you first uh, told people you was running with us. Yeah, yeah. They told you, hey, you know, 
if you do this, yeah. your job may not be protected if yeah. things go, if you, if you guys lose. I was told if we lose, right. or if I lose, or whatever, right. you know, that, you know, it's already out there that I'm going against the union, and they don't like that. Right. And, and it shouldn't be that. Exactly. But that's the, the mindset of the people in office. It's either their way or, or the highway, or you're just going to be let out to slaughter. And people don't, you know, when, when me, when we started this thing about four or five years ago, um, me and Clarence, you know, we sat out and said, you know, if we do this, these guys are not going to do the right thing by us. And they shown that. And we expected that. But we, we, we were not afraid because we didn't care. Yeah. You know, at a certain time, man, you got to put those things aside. Listen, if you're going to be afraid yeah. or you're going to have faith or you're going to fight. Yeah. And I was always taught and, 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 and you know, shown that, hey, listen, you got to fight. No matter who it is, yeah. no matter if it's a billion dollar company, a company who's just starting, no matter how many people it is, you have to fight. Regardless. United. These guys, we like like you said, we're paying for a service that we're not getting. Exactly. So you're just gonna keep you wouldn't keep taking your car to a mechanic if he ain't if he's not fixing it. Yeah. You you wouldn't do that. Yeah. So why are we selling it for this type of leadership? Yeah. I have no idea. Now I understand now some people have came out and told me, hey, listen, hooker. 2016. Um, here's the reasons why we didn't vote for you, and I and I and I respected it because there was some good reasons, and I understood. Yeah. They said, Hooker, nothing you're doing is wrong. Nothing you guys are saying is wrong. We wish our guys in office would do the things that you're doing, standing up to Hoffa, standing up to the company. But Hooker, we got a contract coming up, and we're going to give these guys see what they do with this contract, and we just want to make you know we don't want to just throw you guys into it like that. And we're just going to give these guys this opportunity to see if they can do the right thing. Do you think that opportunity might have been the last opportunity? Because I do, because of the way people oh, are showing their stuff. Oh, exactly. Cause, and I, I went back to these people and said, listen, you have no excuse now. Yeah. Look what they just did to this contract. They said, we said no. They gave it to you anyway. The man told you that if you didn't vote yet the first time, they're going to take part of your raise and give it to the pension. Amazing. And 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 I understand why people and so and try to sell it to us like it was a thing, pound of gold. And the thing about it is, a lot of people's like, "Hey, Hooker, these guys are not gonna go back and fight for us, so we might as well vote for it anyway." And I said, "Man, come on!" I said, "Come on!" <laughs> but then three hours left to the to the west of us, same language, needed more money. Not only did they stand up to the company not once but twice, got the, the company to <clears> pay the, the pension shortfall. And they got improvements on their supplement. We didn't get that because these guys are afraid. And how do you feel about us? The problem is this. As long as these guys are in office, we will not win against this company. Because yeah. that's the ultimate goal, to stop UPS from dominating us. Regardless of who's in office, we have to stop UPS. They are killing us, and they don't even care. Yeah. They don't even care. They're telling us, hey, listen, we don't care. We're going to keep doing what we want to do because you guys are not going to stop us. Look who you got in office. He going to tell us you guys can do what you want to do, which he always says. He always says that. So why would I keep voting for somebody like that? But that's the thing. But getting back to the bylaw amendment, yeah. real quick, I want to let you guys know, the reason why you guys feel as though, oh, well, these guys may pick their favorites is because of who we have in office. Yep. You guys still think that the attitude that they have will be the attitude of your next e-board. If it's us, we don't have that attitude. No. That's why we created the bylaw amendment. Amendment. Now, what we plan on doing is a year before the expiration of the contract, we're going to have an ATM committee. The guidelines and the structure is going to be, it's going to go by seniority. The top person in that classification will be a part of that committee. Now, if that person does not want to be on the committee, it will go to the shop steward. If the shop steward doesn't want to do it, then it will go to the alternate. Now, somewhere along the line, we know somebody is going to want to be on this committee because every because everybody signed the paper. Yeah. And there was nobody that opposed it. So we have guidelines and the structure how we. It's not going to be Hooker picking who he want to pick or Romeo picking who he want to yeah, pick. Yeah. No. There's a structure because it's going to be a democratic process. Uh, yeah, that's the key right there. Right. Because I, I think I don't even remember the last time we saw that. So. Uh, yeah, man, because we don't want, we, we want to change the attitude of our members here. You know, because we're not going to win without you. 
against the company or the selection. And that's the goal that people got to understand. Everything we do is for the members. The bylaw members, yeah. for the members. Yep. The ATM committee, for the members. Yeah. Fighting against the company, for the members. Yeah. Every single thing that we have done and continue to do has been for the members. Yeah, it's for the members, and, you know, we are still members ourselves. Right. So, you know, it, it, it essentially it's for everybody. Right. You know, exactly. but, you know, we're not just doing it for ourselves. Why? I mean, honestly, if what we were just talking about is true, why would we want to put ourselves out there to, you know, not be protected? Right. You know, exactly. it's like, seriously, I, I mean, I don't want to do that. Right. I'm like, I want my job protected, well, I, I, right. but I am paying for a service. So my job's going to be protected regardless. Right. It's just how good is it going to be done? Right. You know, are they going to exactly. sit? Are they going to sit in a hearing? God forbid I get in some type of bad trouble. Or are they going to sit in here and shrug, shrug their shoulders? Or, well, or are they going to sit there and go, you know, he's right. He, you know, fight for me. You know, it's just, it all depends how they going to do it that day, I guess. Well, I, I mean, know. you know what? I, I, I experienced it. First hand, man. you know, I, I file, I'll never get it. I filed those grievances, man. Mm -hmm. And to have Kevin Malley just do what he did, I will never forget that. It's crazy. Because they tell us to file the grievances, we file them. This guy, you know, the recording secretary, you know, what he did was just political. And it was a slap, not only in my face, but to the whole process. Now, I could have went to the labor board and filed charges. But that's not what I, I, I right. hate. The one thing that will probably be... A sh and I can see it. It's a shortcoming of mine. I hate to have to fight against my own people. Yeah. The company, man, I'll go all day. I don't care. But I, ha I ain't gonna lie. I have a hard time going all the way against my own people. Yeah. Teams. I have a hard time doing well, cause, that. Because honestly, we're not supposed to be fighting amongst each other. Right. We're supposed to be getting along. We're supposed to be brothers and sisters. And you know, like... Um, I was told that there's going to be another slate and yeah, they're okay. running oh, yeah. and blah, blah, oh, blah. Yeah. And I don't think they really expected my reaction. You right. know, my reaction was like, okay, great. I was like, Congra you know, right. congratulations on running. Exactly. I hope you win. And I was like, they were like, you do? I'm like, well, if you win, if I win, you know what happens? He's like, what? I said, like, we get new people in the union. Right. I was like, you know, I, I want to win. I'm, you know, you know, politicianing to win. Right. I, I'm a part of a good slate. So I'm you know, I want to win, but I'm not going to hate you. I'm exactly. Not, I'm not going to, they, you know, think anything negative about you if you decide to run because it's your right to run. Exactly. But, you know, let's go into it together, you know. I mean, we're going to help each other, and he actually helped, made me his alternate. Right. I mean, come on, that's how we're supposed to be. We're exactly. supposed to be getting exactly. along. We're not exactly. supposed to be fighting. And, and and that's why, you know, I mean, like it's like you said, everybody has a right to run. Um, it's going to be it's going to be whoever that slate is and, and whoever, how many states it may be, it's going to be their job to try to get the members to uh, vote for them. I mean, you know, that, that's on them. Yeah. However they want to do it. Um, like I was telling uh, Eswell yesterday, because Eswell called me, he was fired up, and I had to calm him down because he was <laughs> saying some things. And, and this is what I had to tell him, and this is what I'm going to tell everybody. Uh, our goal is, number one, stop UPS from dominating the members. Yeah. The only way to do that is we got to unite the members, and get our incumbents out because they're not going to do the job. They haven't been doing the job. That's it. That's so. When these other people come out, like you said, good luck to you. We wish you the best. Our goal is not you. Our goal is to get make sure these guys get out of office and stop UPS from doing what they've been doing. So whatever I mean, whatever it is, if they want to be negative, let them be negative. We don't care. We 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 started this thing long time ago. We just didn't show up and. Is we got 10 weeks left, and then, no, no, no. People know, like the feeder driver told me when I first came out today. He said, you got 10 weeks left. He, everybody knows, everybody's seen this, everybody knows what's going on. Everybody understands what we've been doing. If there is no self, self-gratification. It's all about member, uh, member gratification. That's what this is all about. We have to fight for the members all the time. No matter if you like us or if you don't. Bottom line, yeah. they're, 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 like like we just said earlier, we could come up with the cure of cancer, and people still won't like us. It's just the way it, it is. It, it's just how the world is too. Right. I mean, because you know, a lot of people they want to do things themselves too. You right. know, so right. if they don't do it or not a part of it, right. they they really don't care. Right. But you know, not caring in general is kind of upsetting to me because you should care, especially if you've been with the company maybe 15, 10, 15 years, even a year. Right, if, you should care. If you're investing into this company after a year, because I said, like, when I first started, 
you know, after like my first five years, right. the first year with UPS is probably your worst because that's when you don't get any days off. You know, you don't get any paid days off. Yeah. You, you don't, yeah. you know, when you, you don't, you don't get a vacation, you really right. get it after your first year. Right. Uh, your holidays, you take off, they're on paid, you know, and that right there is a lot because you come to work, like for example, uh, around Thanksgiving, Ooh. you know, sometimes that's a two day pay week day, for right. some people. Right. And then you come in the next week and you are getting killed. And then you get that paycheck and it's like $48. Yeah, right. And you're like, whoa, what happened here? And right. then you realize that, wow, I didn't get paid for Thanksgiving. Right. I didn't get paid for right, Friday. Black Friday. You know, and they laid me off on the Wednesday. So I only work Monday and Tuesday and then boom. I mean, when you get paychecks like that and you, and you still drive and go forward, and you make it here a long period of time. Like I was saying, today is my 19th year. Okay, So, congrats. thank you. And in 19 years with the company, when you sit back and you think about all the stuff that you've been through, yeah. today, it's crazy. And oh, like, yeah. It's not getting easier. No, it's not. It's getting worse. And they think, oh, well, the veterans are treating great. I mean, listen, veterans are treated differently. You know, especially the ones that are full-time, have been here 20 plus years. Yeah, you are treat, treated differently. But, you know, you could go any company right. in, in this, you know, on earth, and they're going to be treated differently because why they've been there the best times they've been there the worst times you know and that's how it goes but to have the mindset of like oh well i can't have that you know and, and not wanting to fight but and you not know what though, romeo that that comes from attitude reflects leadership yep you know and I, I learned some things over this weekend and one of the things and i'll talk about it over after the in the, in the hour after the 10 o'clock hour um the members they want to fight yeah. They do. Yeah. But if they don't see that fight coming from the people they paying, they're not going to put themselves out there. Yeah. They're just not going to do it. But there's one thing for me, you, and everybody else on our team to fight, but it's uh, something totally different to see the principal officer all the way down to the trustee. It's something different. Man. Like if you see people like like Local 804, man, every last one of them guys fight from the the, 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 the uh, principal officer, visit parole, all the way down to the, the business agents. Every last one of them fight, and that's why they're taking it to the company like they are. Yeah. Because everybody's on the same page, and, and the members see it, and, and, and they don't they don't have a problem with getting involved because they know their leaders are leading the charge, are leading yeah. the fight. I mean, it's like a, a cheesy 80s movie, if you want to say, but you have to go back almost that far because like when you watch those movies with union protesters and all, yeah. and you see the head of the union guy on a podium going, no, we ain't going to accept this. We're going to fight. Right. You know, and, and do you see all the members lined up with signs right. and cheering? Right. When's the last time we saw that here? And you can't even say, because I remember when the Hoffa came down when we had that big yeah, thing yeah. where he's like, we're not going to pay a nickel, a penny, a quarter, whatever. Yeah. And that union hall was popping was that day. It was, it was packed. Because people believe. Yeah. They believe, and I believe. Yeah. I believe yeah, somebody gave okay. me. Yeah. I believed in that, and that's why I was loyal to them because I believed in what they were saying. Yeah. You know? But then, of course, later on we found out that they were just a bunch of frauds. But again, I mean, hey, listen. And that and that's another thing that bothers me because people say, oh, man, you got to fight from within. And it, it may be easier to fight from within, but even if you're on the outside, you still you gotta you have to fight. Yeah. And that's what some people tell me, hey, Hooker, you know it would be a lot easier if you was on the inside fighting. Listen, if I'm on the inside, outside, sideways, I'm still going to fight. Well, we're fighting to get on the inside, anyway. I, I know, I mean, and then, but, but some people, they, they say, oh, well, they this, you got to be on the inside. That's because they're, they're trying to say the reason why they won't stand up to Hoffa because it's easier to fight from the inside. But they're not even fighting. That's what I'm saying. They're like, not even fighting, though. I mean, can you honestly, when, what was the last good contract like that we had within the last three contracts? Was, were any of them good that benefited us totally? No, the language got worse. Language got Every, worse. Everything got worse. I mean, they Remember, got that progression got worse. Oh, I mean, the, that pro progression. the progression started off as a two year progression, okay? Oh, that, no, actually, it was, it was 30 days back in oh, the day. Oh, it was 30 days. Yeah. And hold on, when, when they first gave out the full time Article 22 threes, it was 30 days? No, when they first gave it 22 threes, I think it was two years. Two years, but okay. Way, but back in the day, oh, geez. it was 30, 30 days. Let's think about the 30 days ones. That's amazing. So, no, that's, so you're basically they just been going, Right, they just been going backwards for, yeah. forever. I mean, with the two-year progression, now if nobody understands what a progression is, it's basically they you have a certain rate they start the job at. If you're making more than that rate, you don't get a raise for the length of the progression unless you're making 
less than right. the progression right. raise. Example, if the job starts at 15 and you're making 16, you, you don't go down to 15, you stay at 16. So if the progression is two years, you go from 15 to top rate, you do not get a raise. But if it's four years, you go from 15 to 16, and then you don't get a raise that first year. But if you go from 16 to 17, you go to 17, and then you go to the next raise and then top rate. But if you are making more than all the raises, like I was, you do not get a raise for the length of progression, which for me was four years. Dean, Dean, our brother Dean Dodd said uh, 84 contracts started the one-year progression. So, wow. So anytime before 84, one year, it was probably 30 days. Now, what they were doing with the two-year progression, which a lot of people don't really understand because... When you get a full-time job at UPS part-time there for a lot of years, you're kind of jumping for joy, and you don't really see the smoke and mirrors that they're <laughs> right. treating you. So right. the contract ends July 31st, correct? Right. So when the contract ends, you know, the new contract begins. So when a new contract begins, they kind of got the whole year to, you know, satisfy whatever's in that contract, you know, uh, or, you know, part of that first year or so on and so forth. So what they had, and I remember the two-year progression thing, I knew a lot of people that got the jobs in the two-year progression. Yep, I was they them. gave them the job at the end of July. Yep, that's when I got mine. So, August, August, August the sixth. Now, did you get the raise? I got the raise. So you did get the raise, but right. there's people that got the job the last week of July. Right, that's what. The, that right. means. See, what what I'm trying to explain is you worked the entire year to get the raise on August first. And then they gave you a full-time job right before you were supposed right, to get the raise. Right, right. That means you didn't get the raise. So that's one year you worked without a raise. Now you're in a two-year progression, and you make more than a progression. Yep. And I don't even think that progression make more stuff really matter for the two years. No, they, it didn't. They, it was like Four a, years when really, really yeah, hurt. Yeah. It was like a freeze for the two years. Right, exactly. So right. now you're in a two-year freeze plus that one year. So you're on like a three-year progression that people really didn't catch on. And then they made it a three-year progression and made no jobs. And then they went straight to a four-year. So that four-year is murder because I got called into it. And I, I started in April. And I had to wait uh, four years and like nine months for a raise. And I'll tell you something. Brutal. I don't wish that on anybody. And right. all the new people were doing it. And instead of changing it, they made more people join the fund. Right. Like everybody. The air, the the air everybody. drivers. Everybody. Yeah, part-timers part -timers are in progression, air drivers are in progression, Everybody. and it's crazy. See, the part-timer progression, though, is, I guess, more comfortable. Yeah, because you're not, you're not really... You don't really understand. You right. come in the door, your, your set raises, okay, right. good. But the air drivers went from two to four, and that's yeah. rough. I know. It's and, rough. And the way one of our old, old 40-plus-year members broke it down to me was this. He was saying that the reason why they did that, of course, to save money. Yeah. And you think about it, if a driver coming in, you know, uh, off the street or wants to, or a part time or goes to be driving, he's stuck in that four year pro progression. But a lot of them don't stay in that job. Yeah. So the union is going to get those pension credit, pension funds um, that he's paying in. Uh, but when he quits that full time job, they don't. Give them the money back. They keep the money. Yeah. And the company makes that like a bandit because they don't because they're not paying that full wage scale for for all those years. That's crazy. And I'm sitting there listening to him. I'm like, man, that's deep. Uh, but it's, it it's deep. just it's just crazy to see how just there's been this steady decline in concessions at the concession, and a company makes billions and billions and billions and billions. And we keep giving back, giving back. Just look at our supplement. They're making probably about billions this week with the Prime right. Week. And, just, and Prime and Amazon yeah, uh, and, and, Walmart, and Walmart all, all banging at the same time. It's and almost just, like peak just season. Look at, just look at, um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, I'm sorry about that. That's all right. Yeah. If you just look at, uh, dang, I got to come back to it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we get ready to go into this break on the other side of the hour. We want you guys to make sure you tune in to, uh, not tune in, but uh, go to www spcr.org and donate hit the link <clears throat> make sure you donate also um on the other side of the break i'm gonna tell you what i learned some of the things i learned over the past weekend at this leadership conference is, is especially a couple of things i really want us to, to pay attention to because i think it will help us we're going into this election man it was very very deep thought provoking and so we'll come back you listen to wom 92.9 south philadelphia community radio give you another edition of the 623 Lives Matter Radio 
show. Um, he said that, uh, you don't have to flip this up or nothing on there, right? No, everything's good okay. right now. Yeah, he said that he'll be back at 1030 once I explain what's going on for the next two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's crazy, man. Everything's going on. It's crazy. That stuff that was going on last night, I thought I was, I thought I was going to be in a fight with my friends. <laughs> like, seriously? Yeah. It made me. It made me almost question what I'm doing. I'm telling like, why am I? Nah, doing? man. It's just. It's just. You're gonna get that. I understand. Oh yeah. You're it's gonna, gonna get come. that with everybody because not everybody has the same passion you do for everything. Right. And I gotta understand that. Like, you right. know, I'm. I'm here for a reason, and then there's a lot of people here for other reasons. Right. Like this guy. Oh yeah. That's what was happening, man. Yeah, hey, buddy. How's your Friday? How's your Friday? <laughs> I was sleeping. Rough, man. I was busy. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it for me. Yeah, well, it was bad last night. Like, it was yeah. really bad last yeah, night. Was. Yeah. Like, I was, and I work in E-Rex. It was crazy. Like, you would think that they ordered, like, a ton of E-Rex. Like, <sighs> you liking those videos, Huck? Yeah, them things. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right, good people. We're yeah, back. You're looking into South Philadelphia Community Radio, WOM, 92.9. Uh, we got our our the vice president candidate here. Say, how you doing? Mr. Joe you know? Esposito. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, though. This weekend, I was down and I was up in New York for this leadership conference, right? Mm. And there was one of, the, one of the leaders there was telling a story. And he was saying that the reason why he got more involved was right after this whole contract debacle. He was saying that when he went to bed on October the 5th and we had voted the contract down, he went to bed happy and like most of us were. I know I was. Yeah, I mean, it was really good because I remember coming into work, people high-fiving, getting nuts and everything, right, right. but then boom. Because we had took a couple of drivers out for, for, for some, you know, dinners, some drinks at Miller's behind Oregon Avenue, celebrating, man, and... I remember that. I remember and, the pictures. And then he says, uh, when he woke up in the morning, he found out what happened. He said he was done with the union. He said he was done. It's upsetting. He said there was no way that they could get away with it, especially after the company said they was going to go back to the table. And then these guys just said, no, you're not. Yeah. So then he said he got a call from um, one of his brothers, which is the recording secretary right now for 804. He said, listen, don't stop. Things are going to get better. We're going to get, we're going to get in the office. We gonna make a change. You're gonna see. So he he got more involved. He helped those guys get in the office, and now they just kicking UPS can all up and down 804, and, it, and they're it, killing them over there. And it makes you think though, because it's like our our the contract, with, I guess with UPS with the bylaws into it, where they can the yeah the constitution the yeah. constitution yeah. basically it makes you think like is it written for us or UPS anymore? Because there's so many little things in there. That they are finding right away, which is not coincidental. Yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, that's why people gotta run for delegate. You gotta get the right person <laughs> there yeah. so they can have it. So what's up with you, man? Tell us what's going on with, at the Rock. There you go, bro. Cause you got a big case tomorrow, man. What's, what's oh, yeah. happening, man? Oh, Tell us about that. Yeah, that, see, and that's another thing. It's about five hundred dollars <laughs> for dinner for four meals, just so everyone understands. It's five hundred dollars. Everybody were in here should understand that five hundred dollars is a lot, a lot of money. They're giving it to you? UPS could, no. Wow. UPS could post, could pwn the case, and then I have to go pay another X amount of dollars, wow. whatever it is. Probably more than that, because the next the next location is in Asheville, North Carolina. Wow. Okay? Yeah. So, it could probably be, a, you know, I don't know, seven or eight hundred dollars. How would it be so much? You just drive down? I can't drive. Okay? Uh -huh. I can't drive four and a half hours by myself. I need right. someone to come with me. Gotcha. Therefore, I got to get them in the room. Gotcha. They got to stay with me. Got to treat him. Got to eat him. You know, got to feed him. Right? Right. It's two days. So put the man together. Yeah. Like, you must have eaten. There's like 260 <laughs> for one, 260 for another. That's five something, right? No. That's not including doing the food. It's not including the gas and the tolls. I can't go traveling with you, man. Yeah, you yeah, got to eat it. That's not even, that's not, that's not even eating it. Uh, that's eating that Bojangles, huh? Well, one time, <laughs> I, when I was younger, I went down to Panama. I took my one buddy down with me. Mm -hmm. We ate, uh... Parties? 
No. Wait, right. where were y'all we at? We ate the steakhouse. Oh, so you talking about steaks? We went down to Richmond and we ate the steakhouse down in Richmond. It was mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. You do got some good food down there, though. Yeah. You got this nice. But anyway, get back to go ahead, though. We can talk so, about food. Yeah. <laughs> the supervisor sure. today, right? Mm-hmm. I want everybody to comment. You tell me what they think, right? Mm-hmm. Supervisor says he don't care. He's going to fire groups because all supervisors working. 25 supervisors came into Oregon Avenue today to aid and assist with the completion of the operation. <laughs> 25 was the number that was uh, cited. Today? Two more. Yes, today. Who knows how many you guys got? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, they, all of a sudden, from other buildings, you're supervising come work and all this job opportunities for them to make money. Let alone, that does not happen in our local. There is you no... something? There is no, like, hey, man, get your name on the list. We're going to make sure you're trained so we can maintain sufficient staffing. Job opportunity comes up. We're going to make sure you get out there and do it. Right. No, they just use supervisor. And, and right. Circumvent. The members when they're going to make money, and then UPS wonders why everybody's frustrated, right? Right. Because most people come in UPS with the attitude like, I want to make money. Right. And looking for job opportunities, which they rely on UPS to tell them about. Right. Anyway, so right. let's get back to this. Right, go ahead. So, he said that I don't care, right? He said, I don't care anymore. You're right, I don't care. I was like, UPS cares since 2004, when supervisors worked every day in the preload, and they never bought my lunch? Are we putting this in perspective here, Derek? Right? 2004, I gotta sit around and chase, chase, chase it with grievances to make sure that it happens, right? I said, then he says, well, when I go in and discipline people for attendance, right, I'm gonna tell them to go to you, right? Mm-hmm. What does that mean to you? Oh, you know that. And, and I'm just, I'm just paraphrasing people here. Right? Yeah. No, 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 you know well, that. That, that means I'm that you're right, rocking the boat no, and they're blaming you. The reason why I bring you in this office because of Joe Esposito. Wants to file for my supervisor's work. Yeah, that's what that. That's means. what it means, and it's a power thing. Right. So, yeah. Now, see that you felt that impression, right? Yeah. I felt it off the rip. Right. Yeah. The supervisor that was there said, "Oh, I feel like you're twisting the words." Do? No. That's why would you say that? I don't know why I feel like I'm twisting words because there's no need what I'm to say, say that. this. There's no need to talk about what I file, right? Mm-hmm. You you go in there to the office and you're disciplining people based upon what they do, not based on what I do. Yeah. Right. What? To that's even say anything yeah. associated with me in the statement. Means that somehow I'm influencing your decisions as you go forward in the process. Yeah. In other words, you'll be more stringent, more strict, whatever the case may be. Right. Amazing. Don't worry, I've been having it my whole career. I don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's, worry about nothing. That's I, right. If, yeah. And that's right. what I told people before, right? The member has to, has to accept responsibility for the actions every day when they come to work, right? Yeah, exactly. You have to say, listen, I want to come to work. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to live my life. If I get in trouble, the union's got to try to make a just cause case on my behalf, and I got to make sure I give them the best possible opportunity right. to win that case and show them that UPS is messing with me and I'm not messing with UPS. Yeah. That's important, yeah. Right? right? It's accountability, right? Exactly. Accountability. <laughs> that was a big word this weekend, too accountability. Big word. word. Is that the big word of the day? Yeah, almost. That's what basically. A lot of people got to understand is accountability, right? And accountability starts with the hall <laughs> and moves on up, right? Yeah. But it also starts with the members. Because exactly. they are truly the first line of defense. Because right. they're the first ones to see what's going on. They're out there talking to other members and finding out what's going on. And they need to tell the hall what's going on. You know, you, I, and any one of our, right. our slate members, any one of Unity, any one of Rob Slate, they're not going to see everything. Right, right? Exactly, right. They depend on the members to kind of tell them things of what's going on. Via text message, email, personal conversations or whatever. Right. Whatever you want to do. Right. Right. But the big thing they need to be focused on is making sure that we protect the full-time work. Because UPS, as we've all seen, wants to come out these flexible work schedules, huh. right? Yeah. And if you don't think that certain people are going to figure out how to take advantage of that, you know, right? You know I will. Hey, listen, yeah, I'll work 12 hours this day, four hours on this day, but this will be my sixth report of the week, and then I'll get all time and a half on the rates applicable for that day when I work the 12 hours, not the four hours. Right. Right? And what's UPS going to want to say when people start, you know, having their scheduled days and they have a four-hour scheduled day, right? Is they're going to start paying not the eight-hour or the nine-hour personal days? Are they going to try to flex it around and say, oh, no, your daily guarantee you agree was only four right, hours exactly. that day? Right. How is that really going to work? And where's the whole stand on this issue? This is another question we got to address come September, right? right? If not now, I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. This is something you that, gotta you have know, a plan all, now. You have a plan now. Yeah, you got to be sitting there talking. Pulling stewards off and, the job and, and kind of communicating with us like, yo, listen, we need to come up and, with an idea. 
We know that there's a problem because we know that people want to take off. We know that that's a situation, right? Mm -hmm. People want to try to flex schedule on their own. That happens. But for UPS to go out and openly say that they're going to implement flex scheduling, right. how does that affect the average member? How is that going to affect the part-timers who are working full-time hours because they say, yo, I want my flex schedule. I want this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. How does that affect the seniority list when you're talking exactly. about who works first, right? Yeah. right? Because they're saying it's going to go in seniority order. That's what they say, right? Right. right. But how do you get seniority from two different centers? What's going to be the deciding factor with that, UPS? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But like you said, though, that's why we need to have a plan going in when this happens. Because at the date they're saying it, the first quarter of 2020, that may be on our shoulders. So we may need to come up with a plan now to go, you know, the, despite of what happened. Oh, I, I got a plan. Right. You know what I'm saying? Here's sure. the schedule. Here's the thing. If you need to take off, tell me you need to take off that day. Right. There's no flex in the work schedule as to how you get generate overtime and pay rates yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. We're not going to be sympathetic to say, hey, listen, you know, so-and-so works six days a week, but, you know, he's really busy working four here or nine there or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. I want to play him straight time for the whole week, right? Because he worked under 40 hours, right? Right. But because he's got a six report in there, I got to pay him time and a half for all that day and work 12 hours that day. And it could very well happen. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm shocked that they came out with that. I'm, 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 I'm shocked. First of all, I think it's a big issue in the collective bargaining period. Right, because it's not in there. It's not in there. <laughs> that's number and one. Across the board, right. across the country, right. flex scheduling is nowhere to be found. Right. That's and how's that going to impact things? Because I see how they, they want to manipulate the system for their own benefit, right? right? We all know there's part-timers that are working across the country full-time, mm -hmm. but don't get full-time recognition for whatever the reason may be. Right. Some things might be as simple as just UPS threatens them for, hey, listen, I'm gonna cut your hours. Well, they tell the union rep, I'm gonna cut out everybody else's hours if so-and-so files a full-time job agreement. And see that? So only and that goes back to what you said earlier. Jobs, not while they're actually supposed to be being posted under the language that we have. And it goes back to what you said earlier, because when um, they were like, well, if, if they get disciplined, I'll go back to you. Well, if the one person that's been working full-time hours had all the people to say something, and they'd be like, well, I'm going to cut everybody's hours, I'm going to make sure I tell them because of you. They do the same thing. That's they crazy. said they said they'd cut your hours with that with that full-time job agreement. Somewhere along the line, the union said we're not going to process it. No one got hindered or hurt, yeah. right? The problem is the work's still there. The supervisor's still working, Ugh. right? And that, so and where that, is where's the full time job pay and benefits? I don't exactly. understand. I don't Being a part time, that. especially, is that we seen the one guy came in what? Oh, I've been here like only three months three back, months. and I'm working three, four days a week, doubles. Doubles, right? So I'm going to meet the 30 and 90 criteria. What incentive do you have not to file to gain full time seniority right. status? Right. What what incentive do you have not to go after the top do top rate dollar? There is no incentive. There's no, there's all the incentive in the world. Not for, all, this all is what I'm saying. For, for that the, guy right, that's there, he should. Say, listen, I want my seniority recognized. But put me on the list. But like you said, I'm though, on call or whatever. I'm on the road to right. 35 or whatever is the end of this contract. Right. But why won't they do it? That's the problem. Another big thing. This is. Amazon Prime Week. The volume is heavy, right? Ooh, yeah. We talked about getting classified and how it's all going to work. Right. This is a week where we think that Article 22 Fours might have to go out full time driving wise because the volume is going to get too heavy, and there'll be regular package cards for the day for all all purposes because the Article 22 Four classification has to involve some type of inside work. Right. It can't just be straight driving. Yep. Well, they that's what that's what the language says, right? Mm -hmm. But when asked, as Bill Shanahan was at the meeting, if a guy works eight hours out on the road as a, as a uh, package car driver, what, what's his classification at that point in time? Does it switch? Does it turn over? Listen, I put in eight hours of package car work. I want to get paid the eight package hours car rate. Eight hours rate. That's right. Let yep. alone inside our locals, as you can pay for the highest rate of classification you work in. And clearly, package car work is a classification within the local. Right. I mean, that's what they do with the uh, air drivers. If they if they work in the hub during their driving time, they get air driver rate now. So I mean, it's it's like if you're driving the whole time, you gotta get your driving rate. 
can sign our local, I believe this is very simple. There should be no split rates with our local. No, that's split rates. Because they're, they're giving you multiple classifications in a day to split. And in our local, that doesn't exist. Yeah. But yet, they're going to say Article 40 prevails. And I believe there will be some conflict of interest if you go inside there. Because nowhere do I say or ever read that pay rates are a maximum. It's always, always a minimum. minimum, right? It's always, always a minimum. Always. But, you know, so the contract calls when you got a guy, money, you got, when, when your president sits on the air committee and it doesn't do anything, you know, nothing changes. Nothing changes. I just, well, when's the last time something has changed, though, that okay. we, that you didn't implement? Like, the bylaws have changed. But when's the last time something has changed? I mean. Well, they changed. What was that? You get to split up your one week of your vacation? Oh, yeah, that was in 2013. Right, they changed yeah. it up. Because so. of team care, because they wanted to go from, you know, one once a month punch to the once a week punch. Right. And that's what that was all about. Let's be honest. Right. 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 That was a countrywide thing out of nowhere. No one was asking for that. I know. No one I ever heard or saw posted anywhere was asking for that. They did it because of the health care coverage. And so people could only have to use one day a week to go keep their health care right. coverage. Right. And the other four days, they wouldn't have to worry about, you know, uh, using up right. personal time. Right, right, right. It was all about the about the theory of making sure you're covered for your health benefits. Right. That's it. That's yeah. what it was about. It's amazing. It's a, it was a huge distraction for everything. That's all. Yeah, this is what these guys, that's why people, we got 10 weeks. 10 weeks. I came out of the building today. That's the first thing that few this guy said to me. Hey, Hooker, we got 10 weeks. What happens in 10 weeks? Hooker, let's let Hey, listen, know. nominations, ballots come out, people got to vote. You got to vote. I think here's the bigger issue. Everybody's got to understand this. You need to talk about what things you want changed inside this local. Yeah. You can't be worried about what's happening to Phillies today. You can't be worried about what's happening with stuff at home. You can talk about what's happening here and what's going to be happening to your paycheck because people aren't doing their job. They're not living up to expectations, right? Yeah. Everybody's Everybody always starts to cry a little bit or complain, right? Mm -hmm. You need to put that complaint in an accident. Exactly. This is why I'm not going to vote for them because, you know what, hey, I went... I used the process. And it failed me. And you failed me. Yeah. Yep. You failed me for something simple. Exactly. Right? Like if I filed to get my full time seniority, did the process failed me. We had a feeder drive, right? Mm -hmm. He said, listen, I was starting in package cars and during the summer. I went through the process, whatever. Then they told me I wasn't a full time package car driver like they said when I was hired on the street. Now it's not I'm a utility driver. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we got a problem. Yeah. You know? Let alone this particular week here with Amazon when the packages go raised up. And I brought this to shine his attention. Utility drivers are no longer covering for vacations, comp, disability. They're not covering for that. This week, they're not covering for that because the volume is so high. There's no, you're not covering for anything. That's amazing. You understand what I'm saying? Right. You're not covering for those big things. The pension contributions for this week need to be at the full rate all the time. And the volume has grown from last year significantly to the point where you got a question, is the utility driver really on to go cover somebody or are they just trying to, you know. Right. You're right. Do whatever. Do what they want. Yep. That's what they've been doing, man. That's what they've been doing, what they want. So, and we got a, we got an opportunity to change all that. And I'm, I'm hoping everybody's hooping and hollering. Oregon Avenue, PHL, everybody hooping and hollering. All classifications, all shifts that we need a change. But, you know, we heard that before, but it wasn't like this, I, I must admit. It wasn't as, as vocal or as vibrant as it is right now. I think it's very, I think it's very vibrant, very vocal. I think this time around, I see more and more drivers yeah. acknowledge, you know, as you go through the building, not that they don't acknowledge anyway, but a different kind of acknowledgement. Yeah, it is. An yeah. acceptance of what's going on. Yeah. They see what's going on. They see the lackluster performance. They see the dedication isn't yeah. there anymore. They see that some of the people in that slate have just checked out. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's not even fake. It might not be so much about being they checked out. They're overwhelmed because of the, the principal officer isn't giving the tools necessary saying, or the like, time you, necessary right. to process complex cases. Like, for instance, the wage case, right? Rob said he wouldn't practice it or wouldn't do it, right? Mm -hmm. Now Shanahan's taking it. Why? Because he read the stuff. He did the work, right? There's nobody to do the work. For all this time. You know what I mean? This case could have been resolved years ago. Everybody could have been reaping awards years ago. Right. UPS is going to have to pay. No doubt about yeah. it. They're going to have to yeah. pay. So we were looking and there's for gonna be some, And there's going to be some big grievances filed after this gets settled in the case. I'll tell you right now. So we're looking for this. I'm for, going for it. For that, for a, a good report come, what, tomorrow? Or who knows? 
They don't get that lot anymore. Yeah. About. They're yeah. going to get that lot. It's going to go to arbitrator. The question is how it's going to go to an arbitrator. As we were talking about Shanahan, they get arbitrated as they did with the part timers, holiday pay issue at the APGGC level, mm -hmm. or they could deadlock it and then send it up to the national level so they'll go discuss it at the national level. Right. But if there's any influence to this matter, obviously Shanahan should exert his influence and say, if you're going to deadlock it, it's getting hurt here by an arbitrator. It's not getting bumped up and sitting right. for another who knows how long with that particular thing. Uh -huh. Right? So he'll also tell me, too, where the uh, the national panel is in October if it happens to get that lot. You might have to do something there in October and go there. Yeah. Hopefully it's close by. I know a couple times it has been close by. That would be good because we, we'll be on vacation for, for, for the campaign. So that would be good. We could take a little break and go up there and see that, see that victory. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They don't have an arbitrator to sit up there, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Right. Right? Right. Governor Emmer, arbitrations take time. That's oh, why yeah. a lot of things, like, they do the thing, then they got to select the arbitrator. There's a whole process involved. Right. And that's why sometimes it takes years for a case to come to fruition because of the selection process. There isn't an arbitrator to sit there for language cases right then and there, which I think there really should be some kind of... Some kind of process for that. What's up? Look, man, man. Hey, it was good hanging out with you, man, this past weekend, man. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate all the support. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, um, uh, 10 weeks. 10 weeks, y'all. That's, that's my, that's, that's, that's what I keep telling everybody. I think I'm going to answer every question for now on just for 10 weeks. Hey, Hooker, what day is it? 10 weeks. Mm hmm Yeah, what time is it? 10 weeks. 10 weeks, man. That's it, man. That's it. I mean, that's that's the people that just gotta vote. Like you were saying, it, there is a difference in how it was in 2016. But in the back of my mind, man, I still just the people not voting. You gotta man. wait till the paper gets there. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just I just hate the paper stacks. Got to be there in order to make the change. Yeah, everybody's gotta yeah. understand. Yeah, if you're not actively <laughs> pursuing getting them stacks high in the favor favor of us, or whatever candidate you choose, you know what? <laughs> yeah, you're never gonna get change. Never. Yeah, you can't going to change. Yeah. The problem is, is that you got to squeak these wheels here for everybody. Yeah, everybody gotta squeak them. Got, yeah. Everybody's got complacent it. because you think about it, the people who've been in office how many years? Well, the core group been there since I've been mm -hmm. here, since I've been here. There's a lot of people, and we have this problem too, that don't have an attitude to come into work every day. And those people are the bigger issue and the problem. I'm not saying that they're bad people, right? right? But their goals or objectives are not ones that sh that people who are actively involved in the union right. and trying to make a better place share, right? right. Because they're kind of, as he would say, complacent. Yeah. yeah. Let's keep it. Let's keep the status quo going. Right. Right. Yeah. I listen. Take the hit from me, brother, brother Hooker. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't get get that money, so I can go home early today. <laughs> right. Right. That's that's the stuff that I hear. Right. And when I hear that, I go, well, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to sacrifice two, three, four, what? How many how, how many hundreds do I have to sacrifice as your fellow union brother so you can go home early today? Right. So I work late while you roll, roll out early. Right. right. You know what I mean? Instead of help out and get done. Right. Now, listen, it's all UBS's fault. They try to teach a team concept, but there is no team concept. There isn't any team. There isn't any team. There isn't any team concept. They, they call on the radio, here, get this fire, get that fire. <laughs> But they don't, I've never seen them ever actively explain to people, even in PCMs, hey, this is what's going on. These are where the problems are occurring. Let's try to fix this and address this so we don't have these problems in the sort and we can have a smooth night. Right. Right? They keep that information to themselves so they can short hours as far as I'm concerned right. because they're always using supervisors to, to, to get their pinch points. Right. Right? Instead of using hourlies to say, hey, look, identify the concern, make it happen, you know? Yep. Yeah. Well, good people, we're going to get ready to, to, to sign out. You guys got any last words before we, before we close it up? I'm going to be uh, Oregon Avenue with Jumbo on Friday around 3 o'clock, handing out some information for you guys. So uh, it's James Romeo. So I hope to see you guys, drivers, whoever, just, you know, very approachable. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll be hearing me out there. Go for accountability. <laughs> Vote for change. Yeah. Vote so you can now trust the process again. How about right. vote? Right? Yeah. Vote. Vote. Well, yeah. that's all it's about vote. You got to vote for something. Yeah. yeah. You have yeah. to have a reason to vote. And these are the reasons why I think this slate has the most important amount of voting here that you do before, right? Yeah. 
Focus are the best. We want to create transparency. Yeah. Right? That's the key. We want to create change with because of that transparency, which will bring accountability to the process. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? These three elements, accountability, transparency, transparency, and trust in the process. Trust in the process, right? Yep. Yeah. You know? We're like the Sixers team of the <laughs> uh, Trust the process. Trust the process. Trust the process. Yep. Someone's going to put that on a shirt for you and give it to you soon, I think. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Vikings yeah. colors, though. Yeah, 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 yeah that, was, that was cold-blooded what she did. But that's all right, though. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we we going to get out of here, man, and, and we appreciate all the support. I, I will say that it's a, it's a lot different feeling than it was in 2016. Uh, I'm just hoping that you guys uh, stay around with us through these last 10 weeks and put it on paper. That is the key. Nothing, no, nothing else means anything. Unless you, you know, if you don't put it on paper. If you don't put it on paper, we're going to be back in the same boat as you are right now. And same group. Right. Same boat. And we can't. We, same agenda. Right. When we, we can't. can't it hasn't can't worked. Like this. Right. Everybody complains about. There's not a lot of success with it. Right. People get suspended for six weeks or three days or whatever amount of days. It's, uh, it's too many days to get suspended for, you know, missheet the package. Right? Yeah. You're not supposed to get in trouble for putting the information in the diet in the first place, but here they go, they're gonna you know, put you in trouble say you're stealing time. Right, exactly. And when you don't have the people fighting for you, man, you you are kinda you 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 you're just a sheep led to slaughter. Hmm? You out there killing yourself, working hard and then this happens and then you out of a job for a month or two. Can you find time? And for, for, for no reason. And like you said, accountability there is they're not accountable for that. While you sitting at home you know, you're losing funds, and this happened, that happened, and they're still getting money. They're still getting paid. The check still cash is still, for them. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they don't well, care. Your they, check they, ain't right. And then they get your bad contract. Then the grievance process is is, is 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 not transparent. Then you don't know what's going on. You know. So I think there's a there's a you know there should be a definite report at every union meeting about. What's going to arbitration? What cases they got lined up for? I think, think that's something that we. I think that would be good for, idea for I us. I think because everybody needs to understand what's going on. Right, I agree. What kind of topics that are are happening? You know, from the students' you know, point of view, that, that constantly that is good, violating you know. us, so people can prepare themselves and ask questions about it. Right. We're even putting out that a week in advance, so when people come to the meeting, we can be constructively talking about things. I think. I and think that's, a plan for that, the future. that is that is perfect. So y'all hear that here first. You know, we want you guys to know what's at that panel. What's What's happening? What's 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 the latest thing that happened in our local for arbitration? That way, uh, transparency. Because if, if we're up front with everything, you you'll be able to trust us more. And that's the thing that we got to rebuild is that trust between the members and the leaders. We don't have that at all. So, yeah, but it's coming though. Ask yourself that question. Yeah. Do you trust them now? Right. I mean, do you I, trust them? I mean, can we honestly say that? I mean, I, I can say I trust them to a point. Yeah. You know, what point is that? What do you trust them with? <laughs> I, th- I, I trust them to the point where I they know that I know the the contract that they have to do certain things. So like if if I if I was like totally obliviated, I didn't know anything about the contract. I don't think I would trust them as much compared. You know what I'm saying? So me being knowledgeable, you think you get hoodwinked, bamboozled? Yeah, a lot um, of people a lot of people are that way because they I don't know. Right? <laughs> yeah, because they don't because they don't know like. I think, scam. Yeah, I think the people that don't know the contract they're the are ones more, that they're getting yeah, right, they're, they're more scammed. susceptible to be, you know, right. Most of the people that get hood wings don't even don't even know they have a union rep. They're busy they're busy getting hooded by UPS. Because yeah. I've seen this I've seen this when I was on the Twilight many years ago. People talking and it's hot I say, Oh well, yeah, we're done work, you know, not realizing they had a three and a half hour guarantee exactly. that I paid for it right. and got you ordered. Say, right. Oh, you only pay for the time you work. Oh yeah, you left early. Mm-hmm. Whoa, 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 man. You asked me to leave early, right. Yep. right? You go out of your way to reduce hours in the operation, mm-hmm. and you ask, right? Just like I brought that up to Slider in the meeting. Hey, during Christmas time, you asked people to go home. Right. You asked to cut hours out of the system because stuff was starting to run lean. You did that, not nobody else. Right. You got to pay them. Well, all this stuff is going to change. We just need people to vote. That's the bottom line. Ten weeks left, vote. Don't complain. Let's put it on paper. Like the feeder driver told me today. Hooker, how many weeks we got left? Ten weeks. So we need that type of enthusiasm around the hub. The question, the question is, listen, ten weeks left. That means ten people a day you need to talk to every day. Yeah, I agree. How about that? Yeah, ten people a day talk to them say, listen, this is why we're voting for the 63 Lives Matter slate. And run down the reasons why. 
I'm still, I have yet to hear somebody tell me why our incumbents deserve another a shot. I have yet to hear that. Dude, yeah. Dude, dude, I think we depend upon the feet of the department, too, to start telling us what's going on in other buildings around the country. Right. Other locals. Yeah, you but. Because uh, they get to see it all. Right. You right. guys get to see it all. Remember that. Right. But uh, we're going to get out of here, guys. We appreciate all the support, the phone calls, the messages, the pictures, the videos, everything. We, we, we love you guys. We just want you guys to make sure that you vote. Tell everybody in your section, your center, the sword out, the e reg pit, the ramp, the belly of the plane, the forklift, yeah. everywhere, the feeder. Tell everybody to vote, all right? Because if you want better, you got to vote better. Absolutely. All right? We appreciate you guys. Don't forget to just hold our sister, roommate, actors in our prayers and thoughts uh, as they grieve the loss of their mother. And uh, we're going to get out of here. We'll see you guys next Wednesday. Don't forget, 623 Lives Matter.